So this is a year 13 AQA A-level chemistry topic. We're looking at structure determination, which is essentially NMR. We look at two types of it, carbon 13 and hydrogen NMR. And in this video, we're going to focus on carbon 13 NMR. I'm going to recommend you pause, have a go at the activities for yourselves, and then you'll get a measure of how confident you are on this particular topic and whether you might need to look over it again. So in here, I've actually left some objectives on here where we look at the principles of NMR and the scientific background of it. Um, that won't come up in the exam. Now, there's lots of... Um, Lots of stuff out there that you can read, chem guide I would recommend, that will let you understand how NMR works. But I'm going to focus very much on what's likely to be in the exam, which is how you can analyse. So we're going to jump straight to this as an example, carbon-13. And the carbon-13 NMR spectra will have a certain number of peaks and you'll see some examples of these later on within the video and i'm sure you've seen them in your own work and revision and time in lessons but the peaks are determined by how many different carbon environments there are and we're going to start by just seeing if we can identify different carbon environments in a range of compounds so let's take a look at this example this is ethane and i've got a carbon here which is surrounded by three h's and a CH3. Now, that may look like it's a different carbon to this one, certainly, but this carbon is also surrounded by three H's and a CH3. So that means actually there's only one carbon environment. So they would give rise to one peak on the NMR spectrum. Two more examples for you to try. So on this one, I have got a carbon surrounded by three H's and a CH2OH. That's a different environment to this carbon, which has two H's, a CH3 and an OH. So I have got two different environments there. They would each produce a different peak. And the one at the bottom, well, I've got a C surrounded by three H's and a C2H5. I definitely have a different environment here because that's two H's and two CH3s. But take a look at this last one. It's surrounded by three H's and a C2H5. That means there are two environments. Both of these carbons are in an identical environment. Two environments, two peaks. We have another example for you to try. And on this one, we're dealing with an ester. If I go to the carbon on the left, it's surrounded by three H's. So is the one over here. But this has a C double bond O next to it. That one doesn't. So let's move across. This is the only carbon with a C double bond O. This is the only carbon with two H's, a CH3, and a single bondo coming off it. And this is the only one with three H's and this particular chain coming over here. So that has four different carbon environments. There will be four different peaks. So that's a nice gentle introduction, but we can find out so much more. This table is provided, this one on the right, it's given in the exam. And you can use that once you can see the peaks to determine what the structure is that made that peak happen. So here we've got ethanol and we want to see if we can identify which of these peaks is caused by which of these carbons. Well, let's take a look. I'll do the green on the left and the yellow on the right. And I can actually see that I've got, um, got a peak here with a C next to a single bondo and it tells us it's an alcohol, an ether or an ester and it's between 50 and 90. So actually this peak is due to this carbon. If we then look at the other carbon which is CH3 and it's got a CH2OH coming off it, well that we can see relates to up here. It's between 5 and 40 and it's a carbon with another carbon next to it. So I'm now able to start to use these pieces of data. And there are lots of questions at the end of this video where you're going to get a chance to put this into practice. A little bit on chemical shift. Um, the value of chemical shift does depend on the shielding around the example on around the carbon. So ethanol, for example, the peak with the highest chemical shift is attached is a carbon that's attached to an oxygen. Oxygen is very electronegative. That will draw electrons away from the carbon center, which makes it what we call more de shielded. 
So a greater magnetic field is felt and resonance happens at a higher frequency. What I'm essentially saying here and what you need to take away from it is that if you've got a carbon bonded to something more electronegative, the peak will be further to the left. Okay, let's look at another little bit of important information before we start to deal with some questions. So TMS is tetramethylsilane, SiCH34. This is used as the reference material. And that's really important to remember. This is a one marker that comes up a lot. You asked for the display formula here. What would that look like? The key here is its display every bond had to be shown. Now you don't have to write it that way. You can see, and I've put it here, SiCH34. If you were doing a more structural than display formula, you can do it more simply, but read the question carefully so you know you're doing the right thing. And what we have then got, TMS will always have a chemical shift of zero to the right of the carbon-13 peaks. Based on the background information I've just spoken about, why might that be the case? And I've actually brought over the information again. What you're going to see here is there is very little or no de-shielding by electronegative species. So this peak will always be to the right of all of the others. And actually, for that reason, it means that the peak that it produces is what is then set as zero on the NMR spectra. Everything else is measured relative to this. So what we're now going to do is deal with some carbon-13 NMR exam questions. So take your time to work through these. We'll review them as we go, but see how confident you are. There are several isomers with the molecular formula C6, H16, N2, and one of them has been given. We want to know how many peaks there are in the carbon-13 NMR spectrum of this isomer. Well, symmetry is key here, and I'm going to recommend that you do look out for that when you're working through, because I've got an N with two ethyl groups coming off it. Now, both of those ethyl groups are identical, coming off the same N, so they are identical, and that means I've got two environments so far. But this CH2 is in its own unique environment. It's not the same as the greens, because it's got an NH2 to the right of it, which these don't. The CH2 here between an NH2 and a CH2 is unique. So we have got four different carbon environments. And then for number two, it says draw the structure of the isomer of C6H16N2 that contains two primary amine groups and has only two peaks in its carbon-13 NMR spectra. So a primary amine group is an NH2. And again, we're looking for symmetry. Now, what we have got here is a C6 ring, NH2s on opposite sides of it. Now, that means that I've got two carbons that have an NH2 connected to it, and then the rest of the ring coming around. But all four of these other carbons are now in the same environment. So I've satisfied the criteria for number two. It has two primary amines and there would only be two peaks. Couple more questions for you to try. So on number three, we're drawing the structure of the isomer of C6H16N2 that has two tertiary amine groups. That means an N with three different alkyl groups coming from it, but still only has two peaks. Well, if I look at my N here and I surround it by three C's and I do the same with the other, I can then piece it together almost like a jigsaw. And when I look through them, I can see that the two carbons in the middle have an identical environment. The four environments highlighted in yellow are all identical. So I've got two environments, I've got two peaks. On to number four, a lot of information to take on here. When the molecular formula of a compound is known, spectroscopic and other analytical techniques can be used to distinguish between possible structures. Draw one possible structure for each compound described in parts A to D. Now, obviously, we're looking here at different parts of it. We're looking at F and G. F has two peaks in its carbon-13 NMR spectrum. So it's C6H4N2O4. What I'm hoping is that the N2O4 stands out as being NO2 groups. 
Again, if I want symmetry, I'm going to put my ring in. It's actually a benzene ring. And again, the nitro there, we know nitro as part of our aromatic chemistry, forming nitrobenzenes. And this fits with the number of carbon and hydrogen. Now, when I then start to look at the environments, there's my two NO2s making it N2O4. I have got the two that have NO2s connected to them as one environment. All four that I've highlighted as pink are the same environment. So there's my two peaks. For G, it has three peaks in its carbon-13 NMR spectrum. So I'm going to do another benzene ring and I'm going to move the, nit uh, the nitro side chains around. I've put them on a one and a two because let's look at what happens. Both of these are identical. And then following the ring around, these two are identical and these two are identical. Now, it is important to be able to answer this question that you've also got that working knowledge of aromatic chemistry so that you can then access these marks. OK, we've got more questions for you. KNL cyclic compounds. So they're a ring structure. They're C6H10O. They both have four peaks. K is a ketone. L is an aldehyde. So I'm thinking ketone, C double bond O in the middle of a carbon chain. It's cyclic. Let's build that ring and see what happens. And I can go around those carbons and I can see I've got one, two, three, four environments. I've got to build an aldehyde. Well, I know that an aldehyde is at the end of the carbon chain. So let's start with that. And I know my carbon chain is going to extend. Let's now add the other component we need. And we'll do it in the simplest possible way. We'll add a cyclic ring. There's the remaining carbons. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons there now. I've got a carbon ring of five carbons. And I've got one environment two. I've got three with the red. I've got four with the yellow. So there are my four environments. So four peaks on the carbon-13 NMR spectrum. More questions for you? So we've got N-phenylethanamide here. Use the structure to see how many peaks in the carbon-13 NMR structure. I'm going to colour code them once again. We've got one, we've got two, we've got three. We've got four, we've got five, we've got six different environments. Remember, follow the chain through. And even if they're very far apart, if their environment is the same, they are going to be the same. In this case, we don't have that. There isn't symmetry here. There certainly isn't another C double bond O. On this benzene ring, green is connected to the N. The two blues are relative to the end in the same way as are the purples, but the orange is unique. So you've got to be confident working through to find these. On to the bottom one, give the number of peaks in K. So on here, both of these are the same. We've got symmetry on this one, as are my two carbons with CH3s and my two in the middle. So I've got three peaks on this, even though there are six carbons. Symmetry is key when you're investigating. Let's move on to a couple more questions. So use the data sheet to suggest a delta value for the peak for the carbon labeled B in QZ. Well, we've got to find something that fits this carbon. And we can see down here, aldehydes or ketones, R, C, O. We're going to look at 190 to 220. If I move down, give the skeletal formula of the compound that is used as a standard when recording carbon-13 NMR. So this is tetramethylsilane. We did display formula earlier. This time you're asked for skeletal. So SI in the middle and your four bonds going to CH3s there. More questions. So we're actually seeing a carbon-13 NMR spectrum here. And I do recommend lots of past paper questions on this to further your confidence and understanding. So four isomers of C6H12O6, and we've got an example here. Do we think this is P, Q, R, or S? Well, the first thing I'm going to look at, there are four peaks. 
If I actually work out the number of environments over here, you can see that I've got six peaks, five peaks, four peaks, and four peaks. So I can immediately disregard P and Q. What I then need to do is start to take a look at the chemical shifts. And I can see in both of them, I've got what would cause either an ester or an acid, a peak between 160 and 185. So that doesn't narrow it down. But if I then take a look at alcohol, ether or ester, what I'm going to see here, well, actually, again, it could be both of them. So I'm getting a peak at around 50, 50 something that fits with the 50 to 90. So we need to look further again. And what we see is our C next to a C double bond O. And that means that we are dealing with... Well, again, it could be either. So let's move on again. It's going to be S. Now it's S because you can see here on the pink that I've added. It's that peak at 30 to 50, which is related to a C bonded to a C double bond O and another CH3 group and another R group. So we have S. Let's move on. Let's take a look at another example. This one has five peaks, so we can go through what we had earlier again, and we can disregard P, R, and S. The answer has to be Q. You can go forward and analyse it further, but we've done enough to answer the question. Got more questions to come. So how many peaks? You need to be able to draw 1,4-dimethylbenzene. So there it is. I've drawn that out. And if I then add the colour coding, my methyls are it's symmetrical. So they're the same. My yellows are the same. My greens are the same. I have got three different peaks. How many peaks would there be in the diagram shown down below? This is not symmetrical. And the S really means that it's going to be difficult to find any carbons in the same environment. So I have definitely got two different environments here. I've then got two more environments on the five carbon ring. And all of the others are then going to be different as well, because there is no symmetry. This blue is in a similar, is opposite side of the ring to the red, but the red is much further away from the S. So it's a different environment. So we have in total here, eight peaks. So that takes us to the end of this first video. Uh, thank you for listening and goodbye.